Let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I thought we already had. <laughs> uh, just a little pre-chat, but I uh, want to welcome everybody to uh, Slightly Warped. Yes, we talk a little bit of sports every now and then, you know, two regular dudes just uh, talking about stuff, as you can see. Um, got a couple things I want to get to. First, I'm Rick, and I'm joined, as always, by Big Show. Big Show. Yo, what's going on, man? Uh how was your week so far? So far, so good. Still too early to call it, but hey, every day above ground is a good day. Ain't that the truth? So, um, getting started with this, um, I don't know about you, but I'm a sweet tooth. And when I read this article, I was like, oh, hell no. Uh, Skittles are unsafe for consumers. A lawsuit charges because they contain a known toxin. Uh, so I was reading it, you know, just skimming the thing. And um, I guess uh, Mars, the company that uh, does Skittles, uses mm -hmm. titanium dioxide to produce Skittles. Uh, Well-known array of artificial colors. And they've been doing that ever since 2016. And um, I believe they're not the only company to do it, but... Uh, they are on the radar. According to the Food and Drug Administration <coughs> Code of Federal Regulations, the color additive titanium dioxide may be safely used for coloring foods generally, but there are several restrictions, such as the quantity of titanium dioxide not exceeding 1% of the food's weight. And that's where the problem starts to come in. Um, let's see here. What were they After, using before? Uh, that I have no idea. It doesn't say in here. It's, it just goes on to say, after oral ingestion, the absorption of titanium dioxide particle is low. However, they can accumulate in the body. And that's where it gets scary because I've known people to eat Skittles and any other candy for that matter. Do you just stop at one? Do you even just stop at a handful? Kill the bag. Exactly. And it better not be a share bag, too, because I'm killing that as well. <laughs> share bags are one of the lamest things around, because I ain't sharing that with nobody. It's mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> so, Especially if, do they do it with M&Ms, too? Um, it does not say. Now, which company's M&Ms? Are they their own company? I'd have to look at M&Ms right now. That I don't know. Because Skittles is made by the Mars company. Cause I'm not a Skittles guy. I don't eat Skittles. I've I've eaten them, but it's not like my favorites. I I like stuff with chocolate and stuff like that. Yeah, but I'm a chocolate uh, guy. you know, after reading the article, I'm really not in a hurry to get any more Skittles. I feel sorry right. for somebody who's addicted to Skittles. Eat that metal. Go on ahead and eat it. <laughs> you start glowing in the dark. I, I can't help you. Maybe be, become a superhero. There you go. I started to think about that, too, as we were talking sports at the beginning of the uh, podcast. Uh, wasn't uh, Marshawn Lynch known for eating yeah. a lot of Skittles? Yep. Marshawn, he off the, on the sideline. That's, that's, what, that's why he got beast mode. It gave him superpowers. Uh, yeah, the only thing it would probably give me is the power to throw up on command. Uh, <laughs> now, this is a perfect segue into the next thing. Fad diets. Um, have you ever tried any fad diets? Oh, yes. And what were the results of said diets? Uh, first, it works. And then it doesn't. Because it doesn't teach you to change your mindset. That's what I wanted to get to. Because um, this woman uh, that's talking in an article... Uh, I lost 35 pounds and cut my body fat percentage in half and almost almost four years ago. And she shares eight things that she learned about losing weight and keeping it off. 
And, and one of the things that she mentions is you got to stay away from the fads because although some of them, for the most part, will give you a uh, real quick uh, turnaround, it'll just, you know, the weight will pop back on you. And she goes on to say why, because if we go through these eight things that she actually does now to keep it off, slow weight loss is more sustainable. That's the very first thing. If I drop 20 pounds in two weeks, you can best believe that whatever I did, I'm not going to do anymore because, A, I'm going to be dead tired of doing it to get that 20 pounds off. So that weight is going to come back on. Even if it's something simple as just eating once a day, you know, you restrict the calories. Once that's over and I go back up, I'm going to go back up in weight. But the thing with your body is once you restrict the calories, it then thinks it's starving and it'll oh, yeah. start collecting that stuff for fat, you know, for survival mode. So that's why the fat diets work because it's the, it's the generation we live in. Everybody wants results right now. You know, I got to have if, it, got to have it. If you've got to get wedding ready, if you're going to a wedding, a family reunion or a high school reunion, something like that, the fat diet is perfect. It'll get you where you want to be in the time you want to be there. Yep. But after that, mm -mm. Uh, her second thing she said was uh, maintaining weight loss had to become a lifestyle. And that's a thing that goes hand in hand with what we were talking about with the fats because you do it, you stop, the weight comes back. If you're doing something daily, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm watching you on the change profile, you're logging those walks in. So, you're holding yourself accountable, you're getting that time in. And, you know, a lot of people, oh, I'll just, you know, run five miles a day for two weeks and then I'll be done. Uh-uh, you, it's commitment. And I figured I didn't get this big overnight, so I'm not going to get to the weight I want overnight. I'm 47 years old. It took me 47 years to get big, so it's going to take me a while to get to where I want to be. And, and that's the thing. Take your time. Do it right. And you'll be so much better for it. Protein is the key. That's what she has for the number three thing. And that's the thing a lot of people don't understand, especially if you reduce your calories, don't reduce the protein. Um, a lot of people will go down from 2,500 calories to 1,000 calories. I guarantee you that 1,000 calories is junk. because you're not going to get an adequate amount of protein in 1,000 calories. And this is not in the article, but uh, something that I've heard from several different quote-unquote professionals, your protein intake should be the same as the amount of weight you want to be at when you want to lose weight. For example, if you're 175 and you're trying to get to 150, you need to be consuming 150 grams of protein every day. And that'll keep you where you want to go because what that'll do, the protein keeps you fuller more than fat and carbs. And it also enables you not to lose muscle mass. Um, I'm pretty sure if I wanted to lose 20 pounds and I lost it quickly, I would look terrible when I take off my shirt. Because losing 25 pounds, it isn't all going to just come from the waist. Bad. Yeah. yeah. No. And I look bad enough. I, I got to do it the right way. Um, relying too much on the scale is something that uh, she wanted to mention. And she wanted to mention that your weight's still going to fluctuate. And the reason why she put those together is because... I think a lot of people, and I used to be guilty of that, look at the scale every week. I mean, every day. You do that, you're setting yourself up for failure. Your body weight changes every day. You've got to look at yourself once a week, once every couple weeks, and then put it together for a big picture. Um, too many people get discouraged if you wake up one day and you're at 180, and then you wake up the next day, you're at 181, you go into a worldwide panic. It might be something you had for dinner last night. It may be something that you didn't have for dinner. You know, like you mentioned about starvation mode. 
you're going to hold on to water just like you would uh, hold on to any excess food. So that plays into account. Um, you don't need to track calories forever. And I like this one because I learned this from somebody because, you know, once I realized that you need a, a certain certain amount of protein, I got a uh, app called My Fitness Pal, and it got me in the habit of putting my stuff in there. And you only need to do it for a couple weeks or a couple months if you want to. After that amount of time, you don't have to do it anymore because you will know what you're eating. You will know what works for you, and you just go from there. Um, and working out goes hand in hand with that protein thing. Um, that just keeps you from losing that muscle mass just as well. And exercise alone is not enough. That's the last thing that uh, she wanted to say. Uh, too much uh, exercise or too little eating or, you know, just doing one thing, anything that goes to the extremes is setting yourself up for failure. So take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then something else and put it all together and work on it daily. And, and see, I've always, I've always heard that the, the food intake is the most important, you know, like 80, 20, 90, 10, 70, 30, somewhere in that arena where. Yes. Um, the, you know, the, what is that phrase that they use? You can train all you want to, but you can't out train a bad diet. Right. Yeah. So that's your base. Now, if you just start eating completely healthy and completely clean, you will actually get some results in and of itself because that is a lifestyle. But you stack cardio on top of that, you stack weightlifting on top of that. It's just going to maximize everything better. and speed up the results. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that good living. All right. Uh, the other thing, real quick. Uh huh. To, to think about too is you know you it, but once you get that mindset of you know that, that's why I like the change deal on Facebook because I see you working out and the other guys and we're all about the same age you know roughly and so yeah it's just you know it's all uh you know everybody is very complimentary you know and supportive in that group which I really like but the other thing to think about is you know if you miss a day or if you break down and had a bowl of ice cream, don't kick yourself in, you know, in the stomach for it, you know, because just move on to the next day. Just whatever happened yesterday, yesterday, just go back and start over again. Every day is a new beginning point. Yeah, I haven't been on in oh, about a week, maybe a little bit over a week now, but uh, that's because I've been working a lot of overtime and I'm, I'm just getting tired. Um, yeah, and, and to be honest, it's too damn hot to be out there. Well, I have no excuse for that. I can still get up in the morning before work and put in. I mean, miles. physically, I could too, but it ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just right. being honest. Oh, I appreciate the honesty. And now I'm getting ready to get real honest. The Bengals. <laughs> the Bengals are earning praise. Uh. It says their new helmets earn praise as they uh, go into the mainstream new era. Really? It says in the wake of the Bengals unveiling their new white alternate helmet, many across the media took to Twitter to embrace the exciting times around Paul Brown Stadium. Can you explain to me how changing the color scheme of your helmet is just going to make everything much more exciting? You went from orange and black to orange and white i mean black and white uh, and and keep in mind the bengals have tiger stripes on their helmet now it looks like a zebra <laughs> i have to actually look at it i'm trying to look it up right now while you're talking because i haven't seen it you're you're gonna you're gonna love it let me see it um i should have texted it to you i don't know what i was thinking but I'm I'm not impressed, bro. Um, I don't I don't think by any means is it ugly, but drawing praise. 
I mean, is that all it takes to get praise from people around the league? Change your color scheme on your uniforms? Um, do they want a cookie? I mean... Did, did they actually change the entire... Like, they took all the orange out? All the orange is gone. Because the orange and everything is still on their website. That's why I'm asking. No, no. Here's the thing. They're only using it for the alternate... So they're only going to use it for like one game a year. Maybe two. Maybe two. Okay, so it's not like a permanent change. No. Oh, well, then I don't have then, – then I'm good with it. I'm, I'm not worried. I'm all right with that. I ain't going to kick him in the butt. I, I, I wish the Chiefs would do something like that, like do a white helmet or something like that. I think that would be cool. Oh, yeah. That's probably not going to show up because – Kind of looks like a Raiders gear. No. See that? That's all it is. Is huh? The orange is gone. I mean, hey, you know they they went to the Super Bowl. More power to them. They can do whatever they want for real. But I don't think they're going back. Uh, you don't think so? Why not? Um, I look at it like. Uh, they were the hot new thing last year, and now teams are going to catch up with them. I mean, it, even in the playoffs, we came within one score of beating them ourselves. Kansas City came within one score of beating them. So they're not invincible. But that same logic could be said to the Patriots. They've won plenty of Super Bowls where the other team was only one score away from beating them. Never had a rematch. I'm willing to bet that there's going to be a lot of similar teams in the playoffs next year, and they're going to be wanting to go at the uh, Bengals. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, they, they definitely like, have a target on their back because they won the AFC. So yeah. they're going to be the hunted and not the hunter. But Now, I'm not saying Cincinnati's going 5-11. and 11. That, no, no, that That's not going to happen. I mean, they'll probably go 11-5. and five. Or There's 17 really nobody game, in their 17 game season now, so it'd be 12 and 5. But um yeah. There, there's nobody in their division that's really gonna challenge them with the exception of Baltimore, maybe. That is true. But uh outside of their division, they're gonna have some tough opponents, and that, that can wear on them. Yeah, the AFC is pretty talented this year, so yeah. Um so before we close it out, I wanna um ask you two questions and they're both bucket list questions first one your ultimate vacation spot if you could go anywhere and have a nice relaxing vacation where would that be okinawa japan really yes why is that so i'm a, so I'm a bucket list just always want to go i want to see the roots of my Bushido art that I train in and, and studied. I'd like to see some of the historical stuff there. You might want to get with James sometimes. That's where he was yep. stationed. Yep. Yeah. Um, We've uh, talked to me and James have talked about that. Oh, okay. Um, where, where is that place that they filmed uh, those Peter Jackson movies? New Zealand. The wife was talking so much about it that she always wanted to go. She always wanted to go. So that may be where I end up going because I don't really have an ultimate vacation spot, per se. Um, any place is a good place. New Zealand. She just said that there's a lot of greenery there, a, a lot of spacious land. Um, she's a real nature person. That'd be, that'd be a cool spot to visit. If we stayed in a cottage for a week and she could just go out and not have anybody to the left or to the right and just just quiet, peace, and relaxing, she'd do that. So Yes, sir. I, I'm, I'm, I'd be the guy along for the ride. <clears throat> now, as far as your bucket list uh, for a concert act, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, a single person, a band, whatever. Who would you like to see that's still around before they're no longer around? You mean that I haven't seen already? Yeah, because it would have to be on your bucket list. 
I'm gonna be honest, I really don't have one. I don't have like somebody I'm just dying to go see in concert. I wish I had your intestinal fortitude on that. Um, I do, I do want to see uh, the Chili Peppers. They are on tour. They've been at this since the 80s, so they probably not going to do this much longer. And if so, I don't know if they'll maintain a high level. You know, I want to see them before they, you know, get really old or. I liken it to people that. And no disrespect intended to anybody who's a Rolling Stones fan. I know they still tour, but you cannot tell me that they have the same energy that they had 40 years ago they just Probably don't not. that doesn't mean that they're not still good that doesn't mean that the determination everything's there but it's a whole lot different when you're in your 70s as opposed to your 30s but uh yeah that, that's about the only one that i could think of everybody else that would be on my list i have seen so you know i'm good there i'm simple i'm easy to please Maybe they'll play yeah. in New Zealand one day and we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Kill two birds with one stone. I do what I can for the team. <laughs> All right, show. We, we've had another good one. Um, I just want to ask everybody that's watching, make sure that you like, hit that subscribe button. We need subscribers. Get them thumbs up. Get, get it out to more people. Share it with people. There's a little button, you know, if you click it, It'll ask you if you want to uh, share it. So send a copy of the YouTube to other people. And when they ask you, why are you sending me this? Tell them Rick said so. There you go. <laughs> hey, we are slightly warped. Um, hopefully we'll have another good one for you next week. God willing, I'll be here and uh, I'll, I'll, you know, still be in control of my faculties. Uh, show, same to you. I, I hope you're here. Good Lord willing. Yeah, kind of hard to have a group show if you don't have the two of us. So, right. Until uh, next always, week, folks. Thank you very much, sir. You all take care. Stay positive. Stay blessed.